Well, if we fail to alter our patterns of production and consumption, things will begin to go badly wrong. How wrong and for whom is revealed in a KPMG report on the next set of mega forces that will impact each and every business over the next 20 years. This ahead of tomorrow, so World Environmental Day. Joining us to discuss these is Neil Morris. He's director of KPMG's Climate and Ch Climate Change and Sustainability Advisory Services. A very warm welcome to you, Bruce. A very long title, and it's all really about sustainability. So do talk to us about some of the key factors that, that, that you do see impacting every business in the next 20 years. Absolutely. Thank you, Hannah. I think it's important to note that few believe that we should halt our human progress. In fact, uh, the African story is quite contradictory to that, where we believe that growth is actually going to be the solution to many of the social challenges that we faced with on our continent. It makes sense then that this is both the greatest risk and the largest opportunity that business face, and that's their ability to decouple their environmental impact and their resource intensity uh, from this growth. We looked at uh, 20, uh, 10 factors that uh, we believe will affect all businesses over the next 10 years. But I think it's an important place to start to say, well, what's happened in the last 20 years? And so we looked back. There's three key pieces that I think I'd like to touch on first. One was on globalization. We saw globalization in the last 20 years that we never expected. That globalization was made available through digitalization and the digital connectivity that we see today where many people in their homes are connecting internationally, locally, down the passage, and it's a connectivity which saw us changing the way that we do businesses. But the third piece is around disparate prosperity. Although people as a whole um, became far better off, the gap between the rich and poor widened tremendously, and it's that disparate prosperity which we've seen just in the last year as a huge concern for uh, Africa as a, as a nation. You cannot have successful businesses in a failing society. And so we need to look to those 10 forces that we feel that business needs to be uh, dealing with going forward. We don't have time to go through all the 10 forces, but if you were to look at all the 10 and say, well, this is what characterizes all of them, what would it be? Well, that's a, that's a tough question. We don't have time for all 10, but climate change is key. There's seven of the top 10 countries in the world on the African continent which are identified as the most vulnerable to climate change. Population growth, we see almost all of the world's population growth over the next 20 years taking place in, in Asia and Africa. Urbanization, key challenge for us on the African continent. Uh, in 2009, the world's population lived more in cities than outer cities. That's not yet the case in Africa. We believe that will happen in the next 20 years. And so when you combine population growth with the growth in wealth, I think that the growth in the wealth and the middle class in Africa, if we get things right, will be the area that has some of the greatest impacts and some of the best opportunities for business, uh, but uh, there are also risks there. What I would see, though, is that some businesses are looking at these numbers and looking at reports like yours and saying, how do we prepare for it? Is there, is, do you think that enough of that is happening? Because I would imagine that if you are a business that's wanting to, to last for the next 10 years, 20 years, or you know, leave a legacy, you are looking at those numbers and looking at all these factors you're speaking about and making the changes you need to make. Absolutely. I think there's some education that needs to take place and everyone's trying to work out what these factors are and how they affect on their business. Part of the report, we've studied a number of sectors and tried to place them in buckets as to who's the best positioned, who's got the, the, the uphill climbers as, as we placed Who it. Who are the best positioned? I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're quite a few, but if you were to look at one that is doing, as you're saying, you know, meeting some of these, mm -hmm. these um, requirements, positioning themselves, who, who does stand out for you? We'd, we'd classify them as, as solution providers, some of the other industries, and immediately that stands out as the internet and telecommunications companies. We see the chemical sector as well as the automobile sector as some of the best place to take advantage of, of these changes, and the ones that have made the greatest strides as well. And the ones that are lagging behind and not making the changes? Uh, unfortunately, the uphill climbers we see as in uh, food production and beverages. And well, those are things that we all need. We, we like that? eating and drinking. Why is that? Well, their environmental impacts as a whole, um, when, you, when you tally them all up, their environmental impacts are, uh, are quite tremendous. Their footprints are, are growing. And the ability to produce food is, is, is getting more difficult. Uh, food prices we're expecting to see increasing. It becomes more difficult to uh, create the food that we require. But sometimes, you, I mean, this is, this is what, you, what you hear a lot of people saying. I mean, and businesses, you know, environmentalists say, these are the changes you need to make. Mm -hmm. But it, when it comes to the business, for instance, you know, yeah. 
even for them, like you say, they do want to make that change, but the cost is it's it's just insane for them. How what kind of help can they be able to get to be able to make those changes? Because at the end of the day they do have to make those profits. They do have to stay, you know, in business. Absolutely. You need to be financially uh, sustainable uh, as as well. And and so as part of it I think we evaluated uh, current externalities which are not currently priced in. Uh, so for example, the effects of, of waste and pesticides and fertilization and water usage and carbon emissions and carbon is one which we're starting to see getting priced in and some of our understanding is that we're expecting that more external factors will begin getting priced in and that'll then make us uh, make business take better long-term uh, decisions do as we, these are priced do in. Do we have different strategies for different industries though because it seems as though there's a benchmark and so if you're in the IT I mean I would imagine if you're in the IT sector I mean mm -hmm. that, that's huge in, in terms of, of, of all, all the different businesses in the IT sector but I mean if the IT sector could probably be doing better than foods and beverages because they're different businesses and, and because mm -hmm. they've got different requirements, they've got different outputs. But then we have the same benchmark for those. Do we have different strategies to be able to deal with those different industries because they are different? I think we should have different benchmarks for the different industries and there must be different strategies. Everyone's faced with different challenges. You've got high impact industries, they've got different challenges to those which are technology dependent. So uh, airline industry for example, they're, they're dependent on some really high priced technological solutions uh, to take them into the next 20 years. Your high impact industries, we, we know about them, they're in mining, oil and gas, energy. They've been dealing with these measuring and monitoring for a longer time than everyone else. They've made some of the innovations and some of the investments. We're starting to see some of the returns now. Each of the sectors are in different places in this journey and they need to have different strategies for the next 20 years as well. So, so looking at some businesses, and, and I mean also I would imagine that even for the small business person it's something they've got to start thinking about. You're not going to be thinking about this when you're grown. For you to grow you're probably going to have to price all of these factors in at this moment. Mm -hmm. So you certainly would need to price some of them in. I, I think what we need to see is some, some policy certainty um, around whether carbon taxes and how these environmental externalities will be priced in. We need some, some, some global legislation so that we're not trying to navigate a patchwork of global legislation which creates some economic disparities from one country to the next. And, and those are some of the certainties which I think business would need to see so that they can make the appropriate longer term decisions. Is the globe though unified in saying this is how we're going? Because we have all these year in and year out, we have all these discussions, all mm -hmm. these conferences, all these people coming together and saying this is what we should do. But is there, and I, I, I want to ask about the African continent in particular, is there a unified voice in the strategies that should be adopted for the businesses to be sustainable, to meet the needs that you're talking about, to be able to, to meet the requirements in terms of urbanizations, like you've said, climate change, all of that. Is there a unified voice to be able to deal with all of that? I, I'm not sure that there is. I think as part of our globalization of the last 20 years, we don't necessarily have global governance. And that global governance is, is what is a, a real solution provider for us forging ahead. Um, so perhaps we're starting to see some of the countries making alliances and getting consistencies in their views. I think we did see that in the last uh, uh, negotiations held in Durban, that there was an African perspective when we started getting together. But uh, there's still some time to go and I think there's a lot of work to do until we get a global or an African resolution as to what the best way forward is. Thank you so much for joining us, Neil.